Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm It's Robbie Ryano and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing one of the latest Halloween tanks for 2022 and up first is the Death Chariot which is a tier 8 premium Chinese heavy tank and this is the first chance I've had to do a review of any of the latest Halloween tanks for 2022 and it just so happens that the Death Chariot is actually my favourite. It's the one that stood out for me and I think it's the most competitive out of the bunch, but I'll get round to the others as soon as possible. I've had a week-long holiday, which was really, really nice, but also a little bit unexpected, so I left pretty quickly, and I'm back now making content, and I'll get round to the others as soon as possible. But the Death Chariot, we're going to have a look at all of the stats of the Death Chariot. We're going to compare to the 112, because that's basically what the Death Chariot is with um, a difference in the gun stats and then we're going to have a look at my commander and equipment setup the armor profile of the death chariot and then we shall go into two gameplays and they're pretty good gameplays but they are also pretty indicative of the kind of games I've been having in the death chariot it just seems to be working really well for me I had a good run where I was top tier which does help this tank out a lot but uh, we're going to have a quick look here at the death chariot this is the artwork that will gaming console have put out and I think it looks pretty cool and the um, awakened mode or the Halloween mode has now started on the 18th of October as I'm recording this video so I had a little play on that earlier and I'll make a separate video for the awakened mode but for the awakened mode you get 80 GMs which is pretty awesome when you get the multiple weapon system so you can switch between your gun and the missiles and it is pretty fun but we'll scroll down here and have a look at the price to start with so of course you can get the treble with the arachnid and the asterion as well for 23 23,600 gold in the monster treble bundle so yeah it's always going to be a lot of money if you want every single one of them but if you want the death chariot just by itself the base bundle is 9,200 gold which is a 10% savings and it's still quite a pricey a pricey price for uh, a tier 8 premium heavy tank it's pretty fun but there are definitely other tier 8 heavy tanks that are more worth your while like the Skoda T56 which is a fantastic uh, premium heavy tank and yeah it's much more competitive but this is still a lot of fun and I think the skin looks pretty nice as well you can also get it in the fully loaded bundle for 14,100 gold and the primed bundle for 15,800 gold but we're going to head over to the excel spreadsheet that i have created and have a look at the stats of the death chariot i'll try and make it as concise as possible for you all and then we'll have a look at the commander and equipment setup and the armor profile and then the game place over here is my excel spreadsheet that i have created to compare the death chariot 112 to the actual 112. first thing to note between both of these tanks is the difference in the matchmaking. So the 112 has preferential matchmaking means it only sees up to tier nine, whereas the Death Jarrett can see tier tens, which can be um, a bit of a problem for this tank, but we'll have to find out in the gameplay whether I meet any of uh, those nasty tier tens who are gonna bully me. Um, so in this spreadsheet, uh, green's the best stat, red's the worst, yellow is the highlighted, updated stats with my commander and equipment setup applied. And I'll tell you what that is in just a little bit. But as it is a premium tank, it does earn bonuses. And comparing it to the 112, you can see here that it does have 5% less xp bonus at 10 percent but it does have a command xp bonus which is a really nice addition 25 percent which is something the 112 doesn't have in terms of the silver bonus it's five percent less at 50 percent but you still make a decent amount of silver although you do tend to fire or i tend to fire anyway quite a few um, of the heat rounds which is the premium ammunition so it does reduce your earnings by a little bit but uh, for a halloween tank it is pretty fun so now we're going to get stuck into the raw stats of both of these vehicles starting with the hit points they both have 1500 hit points which is to be expected as they both are the same armor um, profile and both have 380 meters view range which isn't too bad for a tier 8 heavy tank and that can be boosted to a very nice level allowing you to spot for yourself in terms of its mobility um, it's kind of good and bad news in in my opinion anyway it's not fantastic news all around for the death chariot um, but you can kind of make it work and the reason for that is you have a relatively okay 
um, power to weight ratio for a heavy tank to get into position. So 12.61 power to weight ratio from a 580 horsepower engine, which is the same as the 112. However, your top speed is limited to 35 kilometers an hour forwards and 14 kilometers an hour in reverse, which is worse than the 112's 45 forwards and 15 backwards. And it also has pretty poor traverse speeds at 24 degrees a second on the hull and 20 degrees a second on the turret. And the real killer there is that 20 degrees a second on the turret, but you can uh, get it up with your commander and equipment set up to about 24 degrees a second, the same as the hull traverse and I'll tell you how I did that in just a little bit but um, the thing that bothers me about this is the traverse speed and the top forward speed apart from that the actual power to weight ratio seems to be getting me into position fast enough or as fast as some of the other tier 8 heavy tanks it's not the best but it wasn't painfully slow or maybe I was just having a good day it's by no means the best by no means the most competitive in terms of its mobility it's worse than the 112 but you can try and boost it as much as possible with the gun handling skills that help your turret traverse you could use the mobility equipment as we'll discuss in a little bit but that would mean your gun handling would be even worse than it actually is on this tank so yeah 112 comes out on top in this comparison in terms of the mobility it's kind of disappointing news for the death chariot but it's not the end of the world because the gun does make up for it and uh, speaking of the gun we're going to get on to the gun now and wargaming say this gun is the reaper's scythe uh, hence the uh, halloween-esque um, description however i think it's still a 122 millimeter gun the same as the 112 but it does have better alpha damages as you'll see here in a bit so this 122 millimeter gun on the death chariot fires ap heat and he as its three ammunition types the same as the 112 however it does have different alpha damages um, some slightly different penetration and shell velocity value so on the ap rounds you have 460 alpha damage which is the same as the heat rounds at 460 alpha damage that's much better than the 390 on the 112's 122 millimeter gun that's a 70 alpha damage boost which is very nice indeed and 460 alpha damage really slaps at tier 8 and you can make some good credits with this high alpha damage uh, in terms of the he round that does boost the alpha damage to 640 because of the higher sort of uh, alpha damage numbers on this 120 to a millimeter caliber gun 640 alpha damage if you can manage to penetrate uh, the 61 millimeters of penetration can feel very very nice when you come up against an artillery and you know you can one shot them or you find a weekly armored target um, in terms of the actual penetration values of the standard and premium round it's 208 millimeters on the standard ap rounds and 250 millimeters on the heat ammunition and in terms of the shell velocity is 800 meters a second for the AP and the HG and the heat is a lowly 640 meters a second. So very slow. You're going to have to give quite a lot of lead if you're firing at mid to long ranges. So when we compare to the 112's 122 millimeter gun, it's kind of good news for the Death Chariot. Or it is good news in my opinion. The shell velocity is better on the standard and the HE rounds. It is worse on the heat rounds but only by um, 80 meters a second so not too bad in that regards you do have that better penetration at 208 millimeters whereas the 112 has 175 which is still pretty damn poor 250 millimeters on the heat and 61 millimeters of penetration on the he is the same on both of these tanks and the shell velocity is worse on the 112 in regards to its ap and he but it is that 80 meters a second better on its heat ammunition i probably just repeated the exact same thing there but we're going to carry on anyway but you have to bear in mind that the 112 is preferential matchmaking so you won't come up against tier 10 vehicles but the gun feels very nice on this tank or the alpha damage i should say along with the slightly better shelf loss on the standard rounds and on the HE and if you can penetrate those HE rounds it does feel very juicy 208 millimeters isn't great but it's not the worst it's just a little bit meh um, 250 millimeters on the heat is quite usable it does struggle when it comes up against super heavies at tier 10 um, you're just going to have to do that whole flank and get good and try and get the sides of those super heavies or you're going to have to try and track them and get around them or something like that um, because 250 millimeters is uh, quite hard to 
um, compete with something like a E100 or a mouse or a Type 5 Heavy. Uh, but apart from that, when you're top tier, those penetration values aren't too bad at all. And now we're going to get on to the uh, gun handling then of the Death Chariot. The aim time is 3 seconds. You have a 0.42 accuracy. Your rate of fire is 4, which means you have a 15 second reload. The maths works out there. And that gives you a DPM with that 460 alpha damage of 1840. Uh, you carry 45 rounds of ammunition with this massive reload. You're going to uh, not be running out of ammunition. You have 6 degrees of gun depression, which is quite awkward to use on many different ridge lines and 17 degrees of gun elevation, which is pretty mediocre. That's not too bad. And when we compare to the 112, you can see here that the 112 has a 0.2 uh, second better aim time. However, the Death Chariot is the more accurate, but only by 0.02, so not a massive difference there, um, but it is slightly uh, better and every little helps. Um, in terms of the DPM, then the Death Chariot does come out on top, but bear in mind this does see tier 10 vehicles that will rip you to shreds with their fantastic DPM. Um, and apart from that, you just have to bear in mind that, uh, again, you do have that fantastic whopping alpha damage. You do have a slight penetration increase and shell velocity increase to make it um, meet those tier 10. And it does struggle when you are bottom tier, but against tier 8, uh, or seven, eight, and nine vehicles, it seems to do pretty damn well. Um, so what commander and equipment setup do I run on the Death Chariot 112? Well, in terms of my equipment, I run advanced optics, advanced loader, and gun stabilizer. And in terms of my commander, I run a sixth sense, born leader, rapid loading, steady aim, rapid aim, snapshot, run and gun, track mechanic, and situational awareness. In terms of my equipment, I want optics to be able to spot for myself, but you could leave this one out and choose advanced gun lane drive because of the long aim time. Um, advanced loader to improve my DPM and gun stabilizer to improve the accuracy. You could also take out the loader perhaps if you weren't worried about the DPM as much and you wanted the gun handling to be as efficient as possible to make the most of the shells when you eventually reload with the pretty hefty reload this tank has. In terms of my commander then, six Sense and Born Leader is standard. I run on every single commander that I have. Rapid loading to help the DPM and every single gun handling skill I can to help the gun handling out as much as possible because it is a pretty derpy gun. Higher caliber gun with fantastic alpha damage, but yeah, very unruly indeed. Track mechanic because I'm going to be brawling and I want to get my tracks on as quick as possible so I can angle up and make the most of the fantastic armor, the Death Chariot. Uh, 112 has and in terms of the situational awareness that's going to work in conjunction with the optics so it gives me a pretty nice um, view range to be able to spot for myself and get the assistance that way and that becomes increasingly effective when you are uh, top tier so what has that done to the stats of the death chariot 112 for me then well it's boosted my view range to 486 meters which is a very nice figure uh, more importantly though it has boosted my turret traverse from that 20 degrees a second to 24.33 degrees a second which is the same as the whole traverse at 24 degrees a second and an all that is still pretty slow it's much better and easier to get your gun around to people that are trying to circle you. In terms of the gun handling and DPM then, my aim time is now 2.76 seconds, my accuracy is 0.27, so that's miles better. Uh, my reload's now 10.94 seconds for that 460 alpha damage, and my DPM's gone from 1840 to 2521, which is respectable, not great, but with that fantastic alpha damage, um, I'll make leeway for that. Um, so that's in, that in terms of the stats and the commander and equipment so that, let's have a look at the armor and it is fantastic news in the case of the 112 so we're going to head over here to tanks.gg this is the armor profile of the 112 the same as the death chariot and it's the same as the version on the PC so we can have a look at the armor of the 112 and see how it holds up we're going to be comparing this armor to the gun of the object 140 the Soviet tier 10 medium tank because it's pretty indicative of what you're going to be facing in terms of penetration and ammunition at tier 10. So the Object 140 fires um, APCR that has 264 millimeters of penetration and heat rounds which have 330 millimeters of penetration. So when you are looking at the uh, 112 
dead on here you can see here that the upper plate is about 275 millimeters of effective armor and the further up you go towards the turret that's about 280 uh, to 300 millimeters of effective armor and when you angle at 45 degrees you can see here that this upper plate is absolutely fantastic you're going to be ricocheting to the far point here and uh, the middle of the upper plate is going to be a 300 millimeters plus um, of penetration to go through that. Uh, you can see here that if the Object 140 ELO did heat, the outer part would still be um, very hard to go through at about 330 to 350 millimeters of effective armor, and the part closest to you on the upper plate is still about 320 um, to 330 millimeters of effective armor, and there's not a great chance, maybe a one in two chance of going through there. Um, in terms of the lower plate then when you're looking at this tank dead on the lower plate is a 140 millimeter plate with effective armor range because it's sloped back about 208 to 210 millimeters so that's pretty easy penetration even for uh, tiers sort of 7, 8 uh, and 9 and 10 as well and when you angle that lower plate up you can see here that the far um, part of it does get pretty good at 270 millimeters of effective armor um, and the near part is about 258 to sort of 262 millimeters of effective armor so it can be very good against tier 7 tanks when you angle this lower plate up and you can catch people out on it and try and bait them into shooting um, the far side of it or into your upper plate but when it is looking dead at you the lower plate is a fantastic weak spot uh, talking of weak spots it does have two cupolas um, they're both the same in their armor thickness so 150 millimeter cupolas to the left and right you can see here you're going to need to go through this about sort of 180 to 200 millimeters um, of effective penetration to go through this pretty reliably and when it's using its gun depression you can still see these cupolas although they are a slightly harder shot uh, when you're looking at this thing dead on to go through the turret say this thing was hold down it's a pretty beefy turret do not shoot towards the outside of the turret that will be auto ricochet angles and you're going to need sort of between 300 and 400 millimeters to go through uh, however when tanks that have fantastic heat penetration loaded you can see everything turns green here and on the turret they'll be able to go through directly to the left and right if they have about 280 to 290 millimeters of penetration uh, with the heat that's going to be easy for them to penetrate and high alpha damage and high penetration tds at tier sort of 9 and 10 will be able to go through that pretty easily indeed um, however if this is using the full extent of its six degrees of gun depression it's still pretty damn strong all over the front of the turret it ranges from like 300 to uh, 400 500 millimeters in places and the upper plate would be an auto ricochet for the apcr rounds because of the normalization and even with the heat rounds at this kind of angle um, you're going to need something like a uh, tier 10 tank destroyers heat rounds to go through this because it ranges from sort of 350 to 380 millimeters of effective armor the lower plate of course would still be a massive weak spot um, but yeah all in all this is a pretty good tank um, in terms of its armor especially when you are top tier you can side scrape very nicely indeed you have um, 100 millimeters of uh, side armor so you can angle like this and you're going to be able to ricochet a lot of shells um, do bear in mind if you do over angle they're going to be able to go through your side and track you here through the front drive wheel but if you're angling like this not giving too much this is a very good tank for side scraping out off of corners um, try not to give them too much of this side of your upper plate because they will be able to go through that if they have good enough penetration but yeah a fantastic side scraping tank you can sort of almost over angle this and uh, you're going to be absorbing a lot of shells into the side here because of the 20 millimeter space armor for the tracks and the 100 millimeters of the side armor but yeah it's a very beefy tank indeed if you manage to get around the rear of the tank it's 75 millimeters to go through uh, the rear of this tank and to go through the rear of the turret about 68 to 70 millimeters of penetration needed to go through that but yeah very beefy indeed make sure you get hold down where you can and angle at 45 degrees keep moving try and get people to bounce off your upper plate shoot at your turret and uh yeah a very effective armor layout indeed but that's it for the stats of the death chariot 112 we're now going to head into the first of two gameplays so we're now into the first gameplay of today's 
review and we are here on Hidden Village in the Death Chariot 112 and you can get a good idea of the mobility of the Death Chariot here. You can see here that it's not the worst but it is struggling to get up this uh, slight incline here as we get into position but I found it sort of more than good enough to get into position as fast as quite a lot of the other heavy tanks and I'd rather invest uh, my commander and equipment set up into the gun handling and the DPM of this tank. You can see there, as we looked at the team list, that we are top tier, which is where this tank really is an absolute beast. And I've been having a lot of fun when I've been top tier. I'm trying to bully the other tanks, especially the tiers um, six and seven tanks. So. 1500 hit points, yeah, that's more than enough to take a few shells. You have fantastic upper plate and turret. If you try and avoid people shooting your lower plate and your capolas, you should be golden. You can side scrape really well. So we're going to go into a position down here into the center of the map. Um, you can see a lot of the map on Hidden Village you can't use, which I've never really liked. And it's very linear indeed, but there's a nice brawling location straight ahead of us. However, we've decided as the other heavy tanks have made it um, slightly ahead of us. We're going to take a different angle um, and come down the low road. We angle up to 45 degrees as we get spotted out on the open there. We manage to penetrate on the move. That's where run and gun comes in handy as a commander skill. We bounce 320 alpha damage and we get a nice 261 um, assistance damage. And we're going to be coming to the side of the tanks um, that are fighting in the sort of G4 location, see if we can get some side shots. I'm pretty confident that I can block um, a lot of shells down here as we're top tier. We get a lovely juicy shell, a high roll for 516 plus a fire on the IS3. Um, he's not very well anymore, he's got 110 hit points left. We're going to try and get the final shell into him. Unfortunately, we bounce, that's showing the pretty poor penetration there of the uh, 112 on the Death Chariot 112, I should say. However, um, at that angle, looking up at the side of an IS-3 turret, if we caught the top part, there's no uh, surprise that it bounced. And here we're coming around being very aggressive. This TVP VTU is going to struggle to penetrate us, especially if we face hug him. And that's something that you can do to avoid people shooting your lower plate. And also, if they try and shoot your lower plate when you're face hugging them, because of the steep angle, they're probably going to um, bounce, especially if they are of same tier or lower tier. And now we're just bullying this Caro P88. Uh, waiting for our reload to go in and as we're pushing forward we're getting some nice juicy assistance and we're going to be leading the advance now uh, it took a while to get into position but when you're in position this thing really does uh, roll with the punches as you can see there i run the enhanced combat rations to boost uh, the gun handling the dpm we range everything about the tank passively and also actively when i activate it we take out that 217 come round get a shot on the move there into that uh, GW Tiger Pig. Uh, unfortunately he does splash us and gets a snapshot off but uh, I'll accept that as a sacrifice for his life and then we move on. Uh, you can see here that uh, it's quite good on the move for some reason. I don't know if the dispersion values are actually really good uh, apart from the actual poor gun handling of the death chair but I hit a lot of shells on the move in this tank. It's only when you aim in that it's, it feels quite derpy and you haven't seen that in this gameplay in particular but you'll see it in the second gameplay that uh, when you aim in it still can be really derpy and it misses shells that it really shouldn't but on the move it seems to be actually quite good and I think that's just the running gun skill and having a lucky day. You can see here that you do struggle at the end of the battle to get around the battlefield and try and get the last bit of damage. There's a full health dragon there and we're going to try and get into a position uh, to get at least one shout into him. He is being chased our way, so that's coming into our favour, and you've really got to try and anticipate at certain points of the battle where you want to be on the battlefield in this tank, because it does struggle to relocate. But when you're top tier and uh, you get into a good position, you really can put this gun to work, and it doesn't take too long for you to rack up a fairly decent amount of damage. So that dragon is somehow staying alive. Our Barras is probably reloading, and the light tank's gone in on him. However, I believe this light tank, yep, gets his head blown off. Poor T-52. Uh, but we're going to avenge your death. We get a nice 498 damage roll there. So another high roll. It seems to high roll quite a lot as well. 
I was probably just having a really lucky session, but it really does chunk. It's an absolute chonker, and I think it looks pretty cool as well, and it's one of the best Halloween skins that I've seen for a while. Not quite as uh, <laughs> ghastly as the Arachnid, which we'll get onto uh, in a later video, but in that uh, replay we finish MVP of that team, 4k was 4k direct damage, 1000 assistance, block 880 damage, and 124,000 silver profit. So that's it for the first gameplay, let's get stuck into the second one. We're now on Dragon Ridge in the Death Chariot 112, and out of all the maps in the game, Dragon Ridge is probably one of the worst maps for a tank that has 6 degrees of gun depression, but we're going to try and find ways to make it work, and I'll talk you through that in the gameplay. Again, we are uh, top tier, so very lucky in this play session in the Death Chariot, but as I play this more, I'm sure uh, I'm going to be getting into mid tier and bottom tier battles and I'll be putting up some more replays of this tank because I really quite enjoy it actually. I don't have a 112 myself, I've seen lots of gameplay of it, I know the upper plate's really good but yeah I, I find it really enjoyable. Uh, maybe I'm just in a really good mood after my holiday. You can see there that we struggled to get up on that incline but now you're on level ground we're getting into a position gonna go to a typical spot where a lot of tanks are spotted at the start of the game here in that sort of E7 location coming here from the south spawn and we're gonna try and catch a few of these heavy tanks out and get into a brawling sort of match you've got to be very careful in this location of getting shot uh, at by tanks that are over there where that EBR Hotchkiss is. However, being uh, top tier and also sort of slightly angled here, I'm very confident at this distance that um, I'm going to ricochet quite a few rounds. It doesn't seem like there's too many tanks over there that worry me at the moment. And I can always push slightly more forwards uh, and use the destructible buildings in front of me uh, slightly to the left as cover. Um, artillery did try and fire at us once. I've already uh, noted that in my brain. I'm going to try and relocate a little bit more to my right use that hill there or that massive rock whatever you want to call it uh, to stop the shout arc of the artillery and trying to hit me you can see there as we get forward we're the one spotting or assistant assisting that asterion in spotting so we're getting some nice assistance and now we're going to push forward and help him out unfortunately as we push through this gap there's a random iron rain there i don't want to get caught out by that tank a three shot auto loader with 128 millimeter gun can be very nasty indeed uh, unfortunately we repaired too early there a very bad misplay uh, he caught us set us on fire we repaired our fuel tanks because we didn't want to get set on fire again however i probably should have waited because we got amarat in the uh, fire and uh yeah but we uh we, we managed to side scrape out we bounced this second shell he's probably got one left or the, either that he's on a reload but we're not going to chance our luck anymore uh we are down to 699 hit points with a really really long reload now that we're ammo racked so we're going to have to play it sensibly and try and make our shots count and this is where uh, dpm it, it isn't everything in world of tanks uh, DPM is very nice to have, but sometimes it's nice to have, you know, either good penetration or really high alpha damage. Of course, this doesn't have fantastic penetration, but it does have that really nice alpha damage that slaps. If you just make your shots count, you can still get good damage gains, especially if they draw out slightly longer. And, ah, that's just this really, really nice. We get a shot there. Um, auto aim because I was probably in a mood after getting set on fire by that iron rain, so I was being a bit lazy, but fortunately... It, it goes in um, from that distance, this gun it usually hits, it can be a bit unruly, but for me it seems to be um, handed in quite nicely, and we uh, get a revenge fire on that iron rain, and uh, we've waited long enough now, we've repaired our ammo rack, and that's where, you know, these reusable kits from where I used to play uh, years ago, and we didn't have them, it was an absolute pain, but now you can just wait and uh, repair your ammo rack, which is really nice. Um, we're already up to 1500 damage which isn't great but um, for the start we've had playing relatively lazily um, got into a position we're just holding this kind of choke point down here for our team whilst trying to avoid artillery and waiting for our Amarak to come back and now that it's back we can try and push our advantage um, and now we're going to try and get into a nice hold down position here this is the kind of ridge lines that you're going to be looking to use six degrees of gun depression on very sort of small ridges where you can just um, show a tiny portion of your lower plate if any at all as you can see i'm always angling at 45 degrees uh, to what i feel like is coming 
uh, to get me or is shooting at me. There's something in the distance with a low caliber gun shooting at me. Um, I'm probably pretty safe there, but I don't want to get penetrated uh, another time because I'll probably be a one shot for some tanks on the enemy team. And now it's just a case of trying to progress around this corner, trying to let the uh, friendly light tank know there's a tank in the distance that he could try and penetrate. Uh, spot for us I should say. We get a nice shot there on the move from the P44 Panther and now we're gonna try and side hug this IS-2M. Side hugging in this tank is really very good because they only have either your turret or the top part of your angled side and usually they just bounce off of your turret because you're a kind of flatter tank and that's the way to avoid um, facing a tank that has good penetration that can shoot down on your upper hole and penetrate it. However, being top tier, there's not many tanks that can actually shoot your upper plate and go through it very reliably, uh, which is good news. You can see here that when I am firing, I'm definitely aiming for that a little bit longer than I would in quite a lot of the other tanks or tier 8 heavy tanks or in the game. Um, but when you do aim in, it does make it worthwhile when you do slap uh, tanks for a big amount of damage. We're going to use this dead wreck here to side scrape off off against this T28. I uh, think about going for his lower plate again. We've loaded the heat rounds now, but we're going to go for one of his capolas, and we managed to shut him down with some nice shots there. And uh, it's just this one uh, medium tank left. Reverse out here and just try and get one final shell into this T44. Unfortunately, he gets shut down before uh, we can get a shell into him. But uh, yeah, another pretty good game in the Death Chariot 112. Four kills again, 3,912. Uh, direct damage 1422 assistance and we blocked 1060 this time with a 129,740 silver profit um, what do I think of this tank I think it's the best of the bunch of these Halloween tanks in 2022 um, in terms of the 112 uh, it's probably going to be a very similar experience if you have the 112 that has preferential matchmaking it's going to be Probably just as effective. Of course, you don't have the alpha damage this tank has, but you don't have to face tier 10 vehicles. It's very fun in the awakened mode this tank is. I'll tell you that now, and hopefully I'll get some gameplay later on this evening when I have a play session. But I think it's a pretty solid tank. Very expensive for what it is, uh, but good nonetheless. Don't be fooled into shooting the upper plate because this thing is immensely strong. With the six degrees of gun depression, to make that work, all you have to do is try and wedge your tank up, find those lower profile ridge lines, keep moving on ridge lines, angle at 45 degrees, side scrape, and uh, yeah, typical heavy tank play. So that's it for this review. Thank you all so much for your support. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I'll see you on the battlefield, and bye for now.